Well, good afternoon. Let's get started on another restoration. Now this one, I'm going to link the video down below in the comment section. Um, if you regular viewer, you know I did a PAL uh, combat knife a while back that had the, the handle was had been replaced with an aftermarket type handle. Very nice knife, but um, it just had been modified. Now, look at what I have now. This, the same knife, pal. See, beyond the sheath right there. Stamped in the sheath. Now, this one is all original. Sheath original. Original handle. And that's what the original handle is supposed to look like. Stacked leather, got some uh, spacers in here. That's probably Bakelite, what they would have used back then. RH36 PAL made in the USA. Very, very nice knife. Now this one's not in bad shape at all. It's uh, obviously been kept clean. I don't see any grinder marks on it. It is sharp. It's got a tiny bit of rust around here on the uh, the hand guard, but that's easy enough to remedy. I'll remedy that. I will polish and recondition this leather handle because it's in good shape. And this is aluminum. It's actually uh, where'd my little, my little thing go? It's it's that gray color because it's really really oxidized. Just barely some 360 paper, I think. 320. Barely touch it, you can see. So that'll buff off nice and clean. Alright, I love these old military knives. Alright, we'll get this one done. First step. Let's, uh, Clean up this rust, buff up the blade really nice to a nice high polish, and get it wrapped up so we don't mess it up working on the handle. That's just a little tiny wire brush on the Dremel tool. Soft bristle. And just took out that little tiny, tiny bit of rust that was on the edge. And a little bit of rust, and a lot of probably dirt too, but uh, no rust issues here. Let's uh, head to the buffer. Look at that. Well, that polished up very, very, very nicely. Now I'm going to wrap this up with a couple of paper towels so I don't fingerprint it or scratch it or anything like that and cut myself. I'm going to work on the handle. Very, very pretty. Clean the leather good. Buffed it down. This thing is an excellent, excellent shape to be as old as it is. All right, now I'm gonna wrap this end up too. <laughs> While I work on the sheath, I got some decisions to make on this. So uh, we'll take a look at that here in just a minute. All right, and on the sheath, now this thing is, like I said, the original sheath. 
probably can't see it on camera but it's got the logo stamp right there see it says something else there too. pal the hallmark of fine cutlery I would agree with that now this one the stitching is gone in a couple of spots and it's wore all the way off here this side here is in pretty good shape except for here I think it's gonna have to be re-sewn and uh, nothing I can't handle but I have uh, I don't have any thread I've got some uh, some white thread but this is a tan color the tan color I have is too big so and I would rather and I'm sure this is cotton thread that's why it rotted like that that's what they used to use is cotton thread I have to go into town tomorrow anyway so I think I'll stop by the uh, by the big Walmart or something like that and see if I can get me a, a spool of thread a nylon thread that'll match that color pretty good and I have regular sewing needles so I can uh, take this out and sew it by hand because this was machine sewn but I think I can make it look nice if I don't now this one can very well be used and carried just like this if I don't I'm afraid it's going to come apart and it's got one little cut, little tear right there that I think I can uh, a dot of epoxy or something like that I think will fix that. And then of course a good cleaning. I'm concerned about this raw leather back here where it's, it's been uh, wore off. So I'll clean that up good and maybe put a thin coat of dye back here just to seal it up. And we'll just polish up this front and clean this off. That's all for today. Return to this job tomorrow. Alright, we have the sheath on the the pal resewn. Now the way this is built, it was sewn, machine sewn all the way around, and then these rivets were put in there afterwards so um i'll be honest with you the old hands really really bother me today so i hired mama to sew it for me <laughs> she sewed it up had to go just section by section and um, i wound up i did have some thread um, about the same color that was in there so that's what it's sewn with I think it looks very good and I, I epoxied this back together that little bitty tiny cut that was there and there was one here so next step on this we're going to clean it give it a good cleaning with some soapy water and uh, condition it really well with some ink oil the knife's already done and we'll see it again all together here in just a minute All right, y'all, our pal RH36 is finished. How pretty is that? Well, that pommel uh, polished up very, very nicely, very quickly too. It was just a little oxidation on there. Absolutely gorgeous. Now the sheath as well. The sheath is done. Clean it the best I could. Got a lot of dirt off of it. Uh, heavy, heavy mink oil. Let it dry for a little while. Buffed it all out. Uh, the back I was concerned about being that raw leather. But um, I did take a little wire brush and cleaned off most of the dirt that was on there and just oiled it. I think it'll be it'll look much better like that. 
in my opinion. But there we go. Fits in like that. And there it is. Now, as far as collectability, these are very collectible. Rarely, from where everything I've read, we're going to read some more on it from the Magic Google machine shortly, the next clip. But rarely do you find an original sheath that's got all the stampings on there, original handle in this kind of condition. Uh, for resale wise, this would go to the top of the list, one of these right here. So there we go. Another job done. And the next clip we'll read from the Google machine. All right, I'll leave this link uh, in the description box below. This tells you all about the PAL RH36 fighting knife. Uh, this one was probably from the 40s, around 1940. Uh, for uh, war productions, what they were. Uh, made in New York. Uh, Plattsburgh, New York. And some of them, I believe, were made in Utica, New York. Okay, and then uh, they was bought out. It tells you the um, uh, Remington Arms. Uh, owned part of it at one time. Yeah, they went out of business in 1953. Let's see. And then there's more here. Okay, this site here is where they were um, actually sell, sold one. They don't say how much they sold it for. But this is International Military Antiques site. It's a pretty good one to look stuff up to. Well, there we go. Thank you all very much for watching. Thank you for your support. Remember, if you would, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And check out this link. Thank you for watching.